This is Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Reggie Jones Sawyer. He is a member of the California State Assembly, also the chair of a select committee known as the Committee on Boys and Men of Color. Yeah. And what I enjoy so much about the committee is your counterpart is, can I say, a different color? He, is that fair? He's uh, API Caucus. API Caucus. caucus Asian Pacific Islander. Right. He's of Filipino descent. And he's from Northern California, so we kind of cover all of California. And that really begs the question, mm -hmm. what is someone of color? Um, I, I, if you looked at it in a lot of different contexts, right. it's, it's anyone that is not of Caucasian race. Okay. Um, and in, in some ways, someone who has not had the benefits right. of, of this society or any society. And so when you're of, when you're of color, right. a lot of times you have not been of the advantages that you would get in, in, in society. I was recently in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I had the honor of interviewing almost 30 members of Congress. One of them was the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Yes, G.K. Butterfield from North Carolina, a man who he walks in the room and you know he's there. Mm -hmm. Incredibly stirring and impressive. And we had a conversation mm -hmm. about um, African-American men mm -hmm. specifically and how over the last year, African-American men um, have lost their lives, at some at the hands of police. And uh, it appears, one could argue, that we've reached a crisis. Is that a fair statement, sir? Um, yes, and it's not only with um, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. it's our educational system, it's our prison system. Um, African-American males, I would say, are under siege right now. Um, and it has been for quite some time. I, I want to talk about prisons in a moment, but first mm -hmm. I want to talk about that, that first interaction with law enforcement. I, I don't think that I could ever know what one of my black counterparts would go through. I don't know about driving while black. I can mm -hmm. think I know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's different. And, and I've taught my son as I mm -hmm. was taught that when you interact with law enforcement, um, you, you can't be typical, um, mm -hmm. a typical American. You can't be too boisterous, you can't be too outspoken. Because the most important thing in an interaction is to get home and to get home alive. I, I can't believe I'm hearing you say that, but mm -hmm. I believe you. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? It breaks my heart to think that, I mean, we're all Americans. Mm -hmm. And to think that we have different experiences with the men and women who are intended to protect all of us. Yes, but that, that's a, a function of society and the way we've, we portrayed. I mean, if you look at Hollywood, mm -hmm. if you look when you read things, um, we do not prov provide that kind of Cosby-esque mm. existence <laughs> that you see, which is probably more prevalent in a lot of black homes than, than not. And so if you are constantly are showing um, the negative side of any group, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be um, prejudiced toward that group. I, I want to get your read on one particular person that has become well known. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we know her name, but I'm talking about the mother in Baltimore mm -hmm. who grabbed her son out of the riots that were happening mm -hmm. and she became a hero. Do you know who I'm speaking of? Yes, yes. Are you at peace with her heroic status? I know I became very enamored mm -hmm. by her, but is right. that fair? Um, she reminded my mother. Right, my, so, right. So yes. it, it, her reaction was not unusual to me right. or any of my friends, especially my successful friends. Of course. Uh, I think what bothered me in the aggregate of yes. it all, um, there was a football player by the name of Adrian Peterson yes. who probably got really harsh with his son mm. to ensure that he would behave properly. Mm -hmm. Honestly, believe he didn't, he meant no harm, mm -hmm. but society went after him like you wouldn't mm -hmm. believe. And I think it was because he was an African-American male that it was a little more harsh than it would be, you see an African-American woman mm -hmm. literally beating her son to save his life. Yeah, but there was, and, it was, and, but and, it was more the, the, the tone that, I, I don't know, I, I was very taken by her. Well, well, America yeah. believes that we need to save all our children, yeah. and I think in that particular instance, um, we saw 
uh, a woman and wanted to save a, yeah. a, a black life. I want to talk about other black lives mm -hmm. that are often being wasted in our prisons. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that over the last 20 years, California became enamored with get tough on crime. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking a position, it's just look at all the mm -hmm. initiatives that passed. But recently, an initiative passed called Prop 47. Yes. And that initiative has reclassified the way certain low-level crimes are um, handled. Correct. And many of those crimes were crimes that were drug-related. And for better or for worse, a lot of black men mm -hmm. saw themselves being prosecuted for those crimes. Right. So do you see Prop 47 as the beginning of positive change? Uh, it definitely is a positive change as, as one of the chairs of Boys and Men of Color where we now have 22 men members, which mm -hmm. is historic in the assembly. All having, men? Uh, no, men and women, okay. Republican and Democrat, oh, wow. um, conservative, moderate, every member of the assembly wanted to be on this. I want to talk to you about conservative, oh please, but, please. But most important, um, I'm also chair of public safety uh, budget. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a lot of time in a lot of prisons, more than I ever want, and all I so, would see is African American men and Latino men. Right. And so I know, um, and I'll just give you my own personal please, experience. Please. Um, I've raised one son, I'm raising another. Um, when my son was young, um, he, this system um, wanted to categorize him in a way where it would lead him to um, a school to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. Um, and they would call them willfully defiant, which we now have done legislation to reverse that. Um, if they had boxed him into that, he would have been on his way to kind of a prison life, which would have permanently had him in that prison plantation environment. It's interesting um, you use that term. I spoke up for my son mm -hmm. in school, spoke up in ways where I probably needed to be escorted by the, mm. the school police. Okay. But he had a crazy father that fought for him, that fought violently for him. Um, they wanted to put him on Redland, they wanted to put him in a special class. Once I backed him off to know that he had a protector, that he had an right. advocate for him, right. the right. next year he was a straight-A good student. Mm -hmm. He graduated from Morehouse College uh, last congrats. year, um, biology and math major. Um, but just he had, biology and math? <laughs> just biology and math. <laughs> and now he wants, he wants to be a dentist. Dentist, that's um, good. But the point I'm making is mm -hmm. not all those young men I saw in prison, they didn't have a crazy father like me defending him. Uh, another African-American male standing up for him um, to ensure that he would be able to succeed in life mm -hmm. and ultimately uh, achieve their most, um, their greatest dreams. And so that's what we need to get back what to. What are you telling your younger son? What I'm telling my younger, younger son, son yeah. uh, whom I'm having so it's kind of the same challenges with the system that Can I doesn't. Ask his age? He's 13. Okay, so the, I got the, a 13-year-old daughter. Right. I get it. Um, we've got to have this system understand that um, young Latino, African-American males um, comes from the kings and queens, from Aztecs right. and African-American kings. Right. And if they speak up and they challenge you, it's not an aggressive, violent move. It's just them being, being men. And if you're non-white, non um, that's considered being aggressive and strong and leader. Um, when they see it in, in, in minorities, uh, it gets categorized in a completely different way. And that's what starts this cycle of, of, I, of problems that we have in I, society. I want to thank you for joining us, and thank you for what you're doing for the men of California and America. His name is Reggie Joyne Sawyer. He is a member of the California State Assembly. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Time Warner Cable's Local Edition.